Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking about point slope form. It's just another version of a way to write a, a linear equation. We had standard form, slope intercept form, and now we're gonna talk about point slope form. And there's a lot that we can do with this form and it's actually pretty easy to work with. So the form looks like this, y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one, where x sub one, y sub one are a point that's on the line and m is the slope. Now, nicely, m is the slope just like in slope intercept form, like y equals mx plus b. So whatever that number is there is our slope. That's easy enough. But we have to really make sure we see the ordered pair correctly. The form is x minus the x sub 1. The form is y minus the y sub 1. So we have to watch our signs a little bit and be a little careful. So here's the first thing that we're going to look at is if I give you a point and I give you the slope, we're gonna see how easy it is to write the equation in point slope form. It's y minus the y sub one value. So it's going to be y minus four equals, then it's my slope of m, so one half, open parentheses, x minus the x sub one value, three. That's it, that's the form. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and graph this, I would plot my point at 3, 4. So 3, 4. And then my slope of 1 half would tell me to go up 1 to the right 2, or down 1 to the left 2, down 1 to the left 2, and so on. And that's it. That's how easy it is to actually graph in point-slope form. You see the point, you see the slope, you connect those up, and you are good to go. Let's try some more problems. We are going to write the equation. Let me just make my screen a little smaller. I don't know where to put me. All right, we'll go over here. Negative two, one, and then the slope is negative three. So it's y minus the y sub one value. So y minus one equals my slope of negative three, open parentheses, x minus. Now notice my x coordinate is negative two. So let's do x minus a negative two. Now let's clean this up a little bit. This would become y minus one equals negative three times x plus two, because we know subtracting a negative means it's two. Now we don't distribute or anything like that. That is truly what point slope form is. So I'd go ahead, I'd be able to plot my point of negative two, one, and plot my slope of negative three, down three to the right one, down three to the right one, or up three to the left one. And there's my line. Pretty nice. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So the formula is y minus the y value. So y minus negative 4, we're going to have to clean this one up as well, equals the slope, negative 1, times x minus my x value of 3. We know y minus a negative 4 really means y plus 4. The other special thing is that we don't need to put a negative one in front of our parentheses, but we do still need the negative. It's like when you don't write negative one X, you just write negative X. It's kind of the exact same idea. And the rest is pretty good. If I wanted to go ahead and graph this, I plot my point at three negative four. So that's right here. A slope of negative one would be down one to the right one. I can go backwards. And I have my graph. Pretty good. All right. Last one of this scale. So y minus the y value of negative 4 equals my slope of 1 times x minus the x value of negative 2. So lots of things going on here. y minus a negative 4 really means y plus 4. If it's 1, I don't need the 1. And then if I don't need the 1 then I don't even need the parentheses. So it actually just still becomes x plus 2. So I needed the negative here because it's got to be negative the entire value and I'm not distributing anything. But having a 1 in front is pretty unnecessary and then the parentheses don't, aren't needed anyway. Negative 2, negative 4, a slope of 1, and this is what my graph should look like. So working in point slope form, Writing the equation is pretty easy. We just have to watch our signs, and then we need to um, clean anything up, and then we just plot the point, plot the slope. Let's take a look at our next skill. Rewrite to slope-intercept form. So here, 
I have this equation that is definitely in point slope form. My point, if you can see it, is negative 3, 2, because it's the opposite of this x value and then this 2 here. My slope is negative 4. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So I need the y to be by itself. Um, first thing, basically, that should be kind of screaming out to you is that we definitely need to do the distributive property. So if we distribute that out, we end up getting y minus 2 equals negative 4x minus 12. And then the last thing would be to get y by itself. So I would go ahead and add 2 on both sides. And I would end up getting y equals negative 4x minus 10. Pretty good. So rewriting into slope-intercept form really isn't too bad at all. Let's take a look at these two problems here. Okay. All right. So if I wanted to put these in slope-intercept form, I would first distribute. So negative 1 half times x, negative 1 half times negative 4, which becomes y minus 3 equals negative 1 half x plus 2. And then simply add 3 on both sides. And we get y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. Same thing over here. If I wanted to start to get this next equation into slope-intercept form, I would distribute my 2 thirds. So this becomes y plus 1 equals 2 thirds x. 2 thirds of 6 is 4, so that becomes minus 4. And then to get y by itself, we would subtract 1 on both sides. I get y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. So I can write an equation in point-slope form. I can graph it. I can also rearrange the equation into slope-intercept form. Next skill for us. The next skill we're going to take a look at is to find the point and the slope. So just by looking at an equation that's in point-slope form, I want to be able to see what the slope is and see what my point is. So here in this equation, I think it's pretty obvious that our slope is negative 5 because it's the number that's right in front of our parentheses. Our x and y value, now remember, it's x minus the x sub 1. So here, if, if I see x minus 3, that means my x sub 1 is positive 3. If I see y minus 2, that means my y value was positive 2. Pretty nice. Now, imagine this said x plus 3. If it said x plus 3, the only way to get x plus 3 is if this said x minus a negative 3. And if it said x minus negative 3, then we really know that becomes x plus 3. So it, that's the only way that this would be negative if that was the case, if this said x plus 3. So let's try these next uh, couple problems of that skill. Oops. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can do. I know I keep moving my screen around. Okay, first equation, y minus 3 equals 4 times x minus 2. I think it's pretty clear our slope is 4 because it's always this number in front of the parentheses. If it's x minus 2, my x value is 2. If it's y minus 3, my y value is 3. The next one, my slope is 3 fourths. Again, I always think the slope is the easiest thing to find. It says x minus 6, so my x value is 6. y plus 7. y plus 7 means... It's y minus a negative 7. That's the only way to get y plus 7 in this formula. So my y value is actually negative 7. Let's take a look at the next one. I don't see any parentheses or a number in front of the x, but there really is a number there. It's just 1. So that would be a slope of 1. If I see x plus 5, that really means it's negative 5. And y plus 3 means the y value would be negative 3. Good. Last one. My slope is negative 2. If I see x plus 1, that means my x value is negative 1. And then y minus 0 would mean that my y value is just 0. Pretty good. Last skill. Rewrite to standard form. So we did a previous part in this lesson where we rearranged it into slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. But now we're going to take a look at this equation and put it into standard. Standard form is ax plus by equals c. Now in order to actually do that, to get it in that form, I really need to do all of the same steps I did here. To make it look like ax plus by equals c, I still need to distribute. I still need to send my constant over to the right hand side. And I really would at least need to start off by putting this equation into slope-intercept form first. 
Now, rewriting this into standard happens in just one, for this case, one nice step. It would be to add 4x on both sides, and now I get 4x plus y equals negative 10. ax plus by equals c, and it's exactly in the order that I need it to be in. Which leads us here. We rewrote these equations into slope-intercept form. But now let's take these equations and write them into standard form. So we're going to do ourselves a favor, and we're not going to rewrite everything um, that we had from before. We're simply going to continue these equations with what we put into slope-intercept form. So now let's think about it. If I need this equation to look like ax plus by equals c, I would need to add one half x on both sides. Okay, move the x over. And it already starts to look pretty close to standard form. But one of the rules in standard form is that a, b, and c cannot be a fraction. So in order to clear this fraction, I would need to multiply both sides of my equation by 2, or whatever my common denominator is. So 2 times 1 half is just x. 2 times y, sorry about that, guys, is 2y. And then 5 times 2 is that 10. That's in, now in standard form. Over here. If I swing the x to the other side and subtract 2 thirds x on both sides, I'm left with this. We know that we can't have a fraction for a, b, and c, and a is also not supposed to be negative. So the way we clear this fraction is to multiply both sides of the equation by a negative 3 so that the fraction's gone and the negative a value doesn't exist anymore. So now this would become 2x, because negative times a negative is a positive. The 3 simplify out. 3 times ne negative 3 times y is negative 3y, and negative 5 times negative 3 is that 15. And now that, that equation is in standard form. I hope this lesson was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.